and five goals at home is an absolute shocker. Uh, so it finishes then. Bayern Leverkusen five, Borussia Dortmund two. Uh, let's get some reactions, shall we? As Archie Rintat caught up with Gregor Kobel after the game. Can you explain the inconsistency in the performances? Because can, can you know what to expect, what, what's coming? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a hard question because it's not the first time or the second time. It's, uh, it happens throughout a lot of time. You have the feeling like we play two or three really good games and then comes a game like this. And uh, yeah, it's annoying and we need to, to, we need to work on this. I don't know it uh, right now, but uh, what is certain is that we, we, we will keep work and we will keep uh, try even if it's hard, even if we don't get it right away or we need uh, even more time. But we never stop. We need to keep going, uh, we need to work on ourselves, need to work at our performances. And uh, yeah, someday we, we need to be there uh, every game. Uh, so, just to confirm that, what that means by Munichal for Champions League. That's yeah. what it means. Yeah, nine points clear at the top of the table. Borussia Dortmund remains second. Bayer Leverkusen closing the gap on them uh, to five, though, in third. Uh, let's welcome in, shall we, Jan Olga uh, to reflect on this game. Go on then, Jan, have a rant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I can only agree with Craig, but the, th the funny thing is that I've seen all games of Dortmund this season. I've seen them breaking home records. I've seen Ro Marco Rosa be winning five, six, seven in a row at home and everybody's appraised him. But the fact that we talked about this on the show, sometimes they've been very, very lucky because they love conceding goals. And then there is some magic from Erling Haaland or Bellingham do anything particular and they win a football game. And the funny thing, this week, this two weeks that I played a game last time, I played against Hoffenheim. And before the game, I was told this week, they were working on playing out from the back and, and working on a defensive part. Oh, that worked out well, didn't it? And you saw the players. It looks like, OK, we have to try, try what we did in training. And that first goal, and for the young viewers, they don't know Benny Hill, but you should put Benny Hill, you should put <laughs> Benny Hill music on that because that was unbelievable in a weekend that all these teams want to be Manchester City and play out from the back, want to be modern footballers. And I can't believe it. And, and you, saw, you saw the goals, and I agree with Craig. Yes, Leverkusen was fantastic to look. They're an exciting team. They enjoy their football. But the attitude of some of these Dortmund players is like, is like a sinking ship of non-attitude football players. Challenges to Bayern Munich. Oh, my God. So far have we come in the German Bundesliga. I love an unbelievable from Jan. You know, that, you, know that he, that you know that he's angry when an unbelievable is there. Uh, it's very feasible they're not even going to finish second, Jan, on that sort of form. Well, this was the game of best of the rest. Uh, and it was a quite interesting game. And, and Leverkusen said that before the game, there was a discussion in Germany about Patrick Chick maybe being the replacement of Erling Haaland at Dortmund. And, and, uh, and Leverkusen said, well, he should go to one of the top clubs. And that annoyed Dortmund a bit. So they wanted to prove them today. So then they looked like a relegation team. So it was just, just one of those sad games. There was 10,000 people in the stadium. Uh, I've, this is one of the best fans in, in Germany. And they booed him off to halftime. And they booed him off after the game. Marco Rosa went into a quarrel with one of the fans. Well... I, I, I don't like the metaphor of Titanic, but it's very close. Seems to me, uh, you, you mentioned a word, you mentioned annoyed, Jan, uh, about any, any talk about Patrick Sheik replacing Ellen Haaland. You've mentioned Dortmund being annoyed before, any, because uh, Ellen Haaland's camp won't make a decision and give Dortmund a heads up. It seems this club have to stop being annoyed about what other people are doing and start fixing their own problems in terms of the, the, the recruitment and you know making a better challenge to Bayern Munich. They've brought in a new manager, but it's the same old problems. Yes, and I think that one of the reasons for Dortmund, and it's hard to get out of it, is that they more or less understand this is our position. And when everybody state the obvious thing, that they are a good place for good players to be great, then they will be annoyed and say, no, 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 we are one of the big clubs in Europe. We're going to challenge for everything. We want to keep the players. And when the goings get tough, Marlon today, 
I didn't know that he played before he was taken off. Mm. Same with Marco Royce, and he's the captain of the club. It was so bad at the back there. There was times that, the, that we were missing Mats Hummels, who was on the bench and who can't defend at all. But at least he can pass the, the ball. This was just sad. And uh, I mean, Bayern Munich, they must sit somewhere in Munich today with a big beer and think, if this is challenger, we can, we can play with masks over over ice in, the, in this pandemic. Uh, meanwhile, Jan, are Bayern going to give everyone a chance to play without a goalkeeper? That wouldn't help. Even when Manuel Neuer today went into operation with doing his meniscus, he's out for three, four weeks and he's going in. I think that he could play with an outfield player in goal and they would still win the league with 10 points. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.